Hello everyone, Miss Pariso here. Thanks for tuning in for part two. Hopefully you already watched the first video that kind of explained the difference between growth and decay and just a refresher about transformations of functions, specifically exponential. So today what um, we focused on with this one is we went through in class, I actually taught you how to use your graphing calculator or if you have a, a calculator that will set up tables on how to do that here and I'll show you that to you in just a second. However, if you do not have a graphing calculator or anything, we also talked about how basically, remember this is just a function rule, that we can plug in any value for x and we can go ahead and evaluate this by hand. So right, I'm going to take out the x and I'm going to say what's 2 to the negative 2 power and I'm going to get 1 fourth, okay, or maybe you, you get it as 0 0.25 because you put it in your calculator that way, right, that's 1 half. I plug in 2 to the 0, I get 1, 2 to the 1st is 2, and 2 squared is 4, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and actually show you right now um, how to do this on the graphing calculator. Now mine might uh, not be the same model as yours, all right? But it's also, it's just uh, um, helpful. So if you just need some values really quick on how to on a graph these instead of having to plug in and find the numbers every single time, um, you, can, you can do that. So I'm going to do that for function 2. So I went, um, the first thing I did, so let me go ahead and quit out of here just so you can see how I got there, okay? I'm going to go ahead and hit the Y equals button, and I'm going to go ahead, you can type in as many functions as you want, and I can actually, I'm going to go ahead and type in function 1, function 2, and function 3, all at the same time. So I'm going to do 2 to the x power, so x is right here, it's next to the alpha key, you'll see that those are the typical variables that are used in our function rules. All right, and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so now I've got that first function in there, and I can actually store, um, I think it looks up to a 6 in this calculator. All right, um, so I'm going to go ahead and do 1.5, and that's times 3 to the x. Okay, I can hit enter again, and I'll go ahead and do the same thing for function number three. Now, be careful, don't do the minus sign instead of a negative. Notice also there's no parentheses around that, so we want to make sure that we input it the exact same way. We got negative four to the x power. So those are the three functions that are on your handout there. Now, if you look up here, right, where it says we've got graph, if you see here in blue, it says table. So because it's in blue, I'm going to hit my blue button, my second button, and then I'm going to hit the graph so that way I can take me to the table. And you can see here, it's got Y1, it, it inputted all of these values, negative 8, negative 7, and so on, to, and then said based on the first rule, here's what you should get. And if you take a look, when we did this by hand, look at negative 2, and I can scroll down using my arrow key. All right, when I plugged in negative 2 for that first function to the x, I got 0.25. When I plugged in negative 1, I got 0.5. All right, when I plugged in 0, I got 1. So that's that first function. And I can see the same values here. Here's the second function that I plugged in, 1.5 times 3. And so I can go ahead and I can just plug in these values or write down these values in my table now. So I've done three functions right, by just typing them in and hitting table. It's just a time saver. So if you just kind of get used to knowing that. Now, you have to make sure you know how to read all these numbers. Like this is negative 2 when it has the E. It's putting it in scientific notation because it doesn't have enough decimal places to fit there. All right, so that means I'm going to come back to over here. And I'm going to go ahead and record down those values. And I wrote them down on um, in front of me so I don't have to switch back and forth all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and put just put in those approximations there. All right, we had 0 0.5, we had 1.5, we had 4.5, and we had 3.5, not 3.5, 13.5. Okay, and then over here we had negative 0 0.0625, negative 0 0.25, negative 1, negative 4, and negative 16. All right, so now, again, we've plugged in X values. You can use any X values you want. So if I go back to the calculator, if yours isn't set up like this, you might need to go to see where it says table set right above that window button. So if I go here, 
Originally, when I did this, my table starting value um, was at zero. And I want to see what my function looks like with some negatives involved. So you can change this to be anything you want. Um, and also the change in the table, it, meant, it means that how do you want your X values to count by? So I wanted to go by whole numbers. So for when X is negative 2, negative 1, 0, I don't need the 1.5 and things like that. And then these you just leave in auto other, um, and it will automatically generate for that. So for example, let's say I change this to um, negative, just negative 2. It means that my X value is going to start at negative 2. So now if I go back to the table, second, and then the graph button, notice I only go at negative 2. That's the lowest that it goes. So if I wanted more values for that, I'd have to go back in into the table set and change, change that setting. I find that like negative 10 you know, um, is a good spot. Um, it all really depends, okay, on what you're being asked for and kind of determining the reasonableness of it. And then we can scroll up and down like I showed you before. All right. So now with these values, now we can go in and we can um, actually graph them. Okay. And so what I want you to think about is I'm going to, I'm going to go through this first one with you. And then I'd ask that if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video, complete this, and then come back when you're ready so we can follow up with a conversation about some things that we notice, okay? So now that I have my table of values, um, I can go ahead and, let me go draw. All right, I can go ahead and graph these points now. So when X was negative two, it's about one fourth. All right, that's, uh, well, halfway is like here. So maybe like right about there. Negative one is one half. Okay, so there, when x was 0 is 1. So I, I'm just taking the data and I'm graphing those points. Now, I only had you guys record those values, but I could go back to my graphing calculator and say, well, what was it when it was 3? Or I could just plug it in and I could do the math myself. When it was 3, oop, I think I'm a little off here. 2 is 4. There we go. There's 8. All right, and so now I've got the shape. And remember, we know that the, the shape is, it it starts to flatten off. Oops. So we can see that it's going to kind of be flat. And then all of a sudden it's going to go up. Okay, it's going to go in that direction and keep going that way. All right. And so that means here, I'm going to go ahead and draw in. I'm going to put in like, okay, here's where the line that it's approaching, right? It's flat lining to here. And if I go back over to my graphing calculator, I'm just going to show you right? As, as X gets more and more negative, right? I'm going to go back to where it's the negative one. It was 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, 0 0.0625. Look at, we're getting smaller and smaller in those Y values, but it never, and then we get like, whoa, how did it become nine? It's not nine. It's 0 0.00009. Um, that's what that times 10 to the negative fourth scientific notation. So we can see it's getting closer and closer to zero. Whereas if over here, as my X values are getting larger, that's when I notice that my Y values are getting, um, what's happening to my Y values here, they're actually getting bigger in this case, okay? And so we wanna pay attention to this, like, okay, 0 0.001, um, oops, ran out, let me go over to my X's again, okay? Um, so taking a look there is that I can see this is also 0 0.00. So it's it's kind of as I get more negative, I'm getting closer and closer to zero. Well, that's talking to me about that asymptote there. Okay. And so now we're going to just go through and take a look. All right. What's, what's, is this a growth or decay? Well, if we think about the plane analogy, it's taking off. Okay. So as my X values are increasing, my Y values are also increasing. So it's a growth. Okay. My Y intercept well, I can see it on the graph. I can also see it from the table. There's my y-intercept. My y-intercept is zero, one, okay? And then my asymptote, well, we just we just saw it in the table, what it looked like, and we also see it on the graph. My, y, my asymptote is always going to be y equals, and it's gonna be a number, because it's a line. So in this case, it's y equals zero. Now, you might be asking yourself, what does it mean, the rate? Well, this is, think about it like rate of change. What do you notice is happening? Okay, and so for that to happen, you might want to not start at the at the fractions. It might not be as obvious, but how did I get from one to two? I could have added one, but did I add one to get from two to four? No, I'm actually multiplying by two every time. And think about it, one fourth times two is one half. One half times two is one, 
and so forth. So I'm looking for that pattern in my Y values to determine my rate. So my pattern here is my rate is I'm multiplying by two. So that's what I want you to do for, um, that's what we're doing for functions one through six. And then we're gonna come back after you have your graphs and I want you to just take a look and make some observations. So go ahead and pause the video and when you're ready, come on back. All right, welcome back. So let's take a look at, we're gonna focus at function two and three, but we'll also um, take a quick look at functions four, five, and six. All right, so here's your table of values that we should have gotten and what your graph should have looked like. Go ahead and pause the video to make sure and double check all your answers, okay? Notice that these were, all of these were growths, right? Take a look at your y-intercepts, your rate. So something I want to point out to you, okay, is this, if we take a look at, we wanna now compare the function rule to some of these features, okay? So take a look at what your y-intercept was. Here's your y-intercept. Look at there, there's your y-intercept there. Look at function three, your y-intercept. If we take a look, that negative is really not part of that four, right? If we think about it, it's kind of separate from there. Here our y-intercept, is one. Again, think about that value. If we go back to that original form that's up top, notice this a value here. This is actually your y-intercept. So we can actually tell our y-intercept by just looking at that equation. All right. The next thing I want you to take a look at is look at what your rates were. Okay. So if we were to take a look at the rate here, again, kind of hard to do with those decimals, but how do you get from five Ignore the decimals for a second, 5 to 15, that's multiplied by 3. 1.5 to 4.5, that's multiplied by 3. Well, again, take a look at what we're multiplying by. We're multiplying our rate is actually that B value. So this is our rate. That's how we're either increasing or decreasing, okay? And notice that these numbers, 2, 3, and then, yes, we have a 4. There's a negative in front of it, but remember, that's that idea of it flips it vertically. And if we take a look at the rule again, right, notice that we're multiplying by 4. And we can even check those decimals. If I take that decimal and multiply it by 4, I will get 0.25. So in a exponential function, we actually can tell our rate and our y-intercept by just looking at the at the function at the, itself and we can also tell if it's a growth or not because thinking about what the rate is well if we're continuously multiplying then we're going to get bigger whereas if you go over to the other side on your paper if we take a look at function four i didn't graph it um but if we take a look at, at function four notice what's happening in the values i'm constantly dividing by two but you're like miss Paris, so there's not it's not dividing by two well isn't dividing by two the same as, AKA, also known as multiplying what by one half, okay? All right, so that's something to think about is that when we have, and then all of these, if you graph them, they would have been a decay. We would have seen those, again, notice our Y values are going down, they're getting smaller and smaller and they're approaching zero. So here we have our rate is one half. Here our rate would be one third, okay? Our y-intercept for this one is just gonna be one. Our y-intercept here is negative two. So hopefully that gives you a good idea about how to identify from an equation, the growth and the rate um, and it, um, the y-intercept as well. We'll explore more with this in our next video.